Welcome ladies and gentlemen to today's tutorial. Today we are going to look at the mediastinum. Now the word mediastinum, you know, in Latin means midway. Now it's the midway in between the two plural cavities on either side of the thoracic cavity. Now of course, there's a thoracic cavity. In there, we are going to have the lungs lying there. There are two lungs, left and right lungs, which are going to lie in the plural cavity. In between them, the I mean central compartment in the thorax is known as mediastinum. Now, with the help of the transverse thoracic plane, which will actually you know be related to what you call the sternal angle of Louis, which we are going to see. I also know that the sternal angle of Louis will have some important structures, which we are going to use the mnemonic, you know, rat plant or art plant to help us, you know, remember these structures. Now, with the help of the, you know, transverse thoracic plane, which will span, span all the way from, you know, the rib two, you know, anteriorly to all the way posteriorly to T4, T5, you know, vertebral levels, who actually help us in dividing the central compartment, which we call the mediastinum, into a superior mediastinum, of course, an inferior mediastinum. Now, with the inferior mediastinum, yes, we are also going to have, you know, three divisions. Actually, we are going to have anterior division, you know, we are going to have middle division and, of course, posterior division. So, which we are going to help, you know, get the borders, you know, get the content, you know, of these, you know, I mean, mediastinal, you know, areas. So, without much ado, just get to know that when we talk about the mediastinum, we have what we call superior mediastinum, inferior mediastinum. Then the inferior mediastinum is divided into anterior mediastinum. Middle mediastinum, of course, you know, posterior mediastinum. So let's look at our journey looking at, you know, this mediastinum. Now, here we are. This represents the thoracic wall. You know, these are the, you know, of course, you know, the bones and, of course, you know, the cartilages over here. Now, over here, now this is the manibrum. This is the body of the stain. And, of course, you have the style, I mean, the xiphoid process over here. So this is actually the stain of the breastbone. Now, in between the manibrum and then the body of the stain, we are going to have what we call the manibrum sternal joint. Now, at the manibrum sternal joint, we are going to have what we call the angle of Louis. So that when you take an angle over here, so the inclined the inclined angle, which will be roughly around 163 you know, degrees. So this area is the angle of Louis. And that is related to the manibrew sternal joint. Now, with the help of this, you know, manibrew sternal joint being the angle of Louis, then we can take an imaginary line all the way from here, okay, anteriorly. So we run it to the posterior aspect, okay, so that it relates to what we call the T4, T5 vertebral levels. T4, T5, you know, vertebral levels. This, of course, you know. There's T1, T2, T3, T8, and T4. So in between T4 and T5, you know, of course, with their intervertebral disc, that is where, you know, posteriorly, the transverse thoracic plane. So transverse thoracic plane actually is starting from the rib 2 anterior because this is where, this is where we are going to have our rib 2 anteriorly, but posteriorly, it will be related to T4, T5 vertebral levels. So that is one thing that we are going to find. Therefore, as I indicated, this sternal angle of Louis, okay, and for that matter, this transverse thoracic plane will be related to some structures, which of course we use the mnemonic rat plant to learn these structures, or art plant. So if with rat plant, then R for rib two. So rib two will be related to the sternal angle of Louis, and for that matter, the transverse thoracic plane. So rib two. So what is the significance in knowing rib two? In knowing rib two, it will be important in counting ribs. Now, if you are able to count ribs, then we are also able to notify these spaces in between ribs that we call them intercostal spaces. Intercostal spaces. So that is one thing that we are going to find. Now, knowing the intercostal spaces, what will be the relevance in knowing these intercostal spaces? It can actually help you in knowing. I mean, in taking some kind of, you know, I mean pulses or taking checking the rhythm of you know closure of certain valves of the heart so for instance you know the heart are going, is going to have four main valves so these i mean includes so if i'm able to locate okay this area so this is the rib two once i get palpate the sternal angle of louis which is related to the transverse thoracic plane then just below that i'm going to get my 
you know left so to the left right so there's the left side so left second intercostal space now the left second intercostal space will be related to what we call the pulmonary valve the pulmonary seminal valve okay will be related to it or actually the left seminal valve or the pulmonary valve seminal valve will be related here so if i want to take you know check you know the rhythm of you know the closure of of the you know the pulmonary valve or the left seminal valve all that i need to do is put my stethoscope here and then to actually listen to the sound okay over here then just opposite to that one which will be okay just opposite to that one then we are going to have this piece which will be the right second intercostal space now this right second intercostal space will be related to the aortic valve okay the aortic valve and this aortic valve is actually the left semilunar valve now remember that the pulmonary valve is the right semilunar valve actually okay right semilunar valve but it will be related to the left second intercostal space now one thing that we find is that now if you look at this okay this you know is actually the pulmonary trunk okay pulmonary trunk as you can see here there's a pulmonary trunk you didn't now this area is more to the left but you know it courses to the left side so that's why we're able to feel the sound at the left second intercostal space but the iota you know actually moves you know this way the ascending iota you, know, you know emerges this way so it's going to be felt in the right second intercostal space now again, apart from these, you know, semilunar valves, then of course we are also going to have what we call the tricuspid, and of course, you know, the bicuspid valves. So if you count the second, third, fourth, and of course fifth, okay. Now to the left, to actually the left, fifth intercostal space, okay, just away from what we call the body of the stem, okay, just here, then we are going to actually feel the pulsations of what we call the you know the mitral valve mitral valve and the mitral valve is the bicuspid valve or you know the actually the i mean the left atrioventricular you know valve over over here then of course in the mid okay so look at this what we find here is that there's the clavicle around the mid clavicular line okay just in the fifth intercostal space we are going to actually have pulsation so we can listen to the sounds of the what we call the tricuspid valve okay of the trial or the you know the right atrioventricular valve so this is what is very important you know with respect to rib 2 knowing that rib 2 is related to the sternal angle of rib and for that matter the transverse thoracic plane apart from this we are also going to look at the arch of aorta now remember the mnemonic is art plant so the r is rib 2 a is for arch of aorta now the arch of aorta okay which you know of course we can see here arch of aorta is actually at the level okay so the aorta actually yes arches at the level of what we call t4 t4 you know vertebral you know level arch of aorta so that is one thing now the arch of aorta is going to give three main branches okay three main branches are going to arise from the arch of aorta Okay, so there is still arch of aorta that you can see here. Arch of aorta, given an arch at the level of T4, vertebral level. Therefore, at the transverse thoracic plate, we are going to also find the arch of aorta. And these three main branches, yes, of course, you know, from the left, we are going to have left, you know, common, uh, you know, left, you know, uh, subclavian artery. We are going to have the left common carotid artery. Then, of course, we are going to have, you know, the brachiocephalic trunk, which will divide to, you know, the left you know right subclavian and of course right common carotid you know arteries so that's one thing that we are going to find with respect to what we call the i mean the arch of aorta so that's one thing now the other thing is that we also going to be related to what we call tracheal bifurcation now rat plant so t4 tracheal bifurcation so at the level yes where we have the carina okay the trachea yes is actually going to divide okay so the region of this carina the trachea will divide into left and right main bronchi so the tracheal bifurcation point the area which signifies okay the bifurcation of the trachea will be the tracheal bifurcation which will also be related to the sternal angle 
of Louis, meaning that anteriorly it will be related to the second rib, and then posteriorly to be related to what, of course, you know, T4, T5 vertebral level. So that's one thing with the tracheal bifurcation. Yes, apart from this, yes, you also have oligo. So that's right. Now, plant P is actual pulmonary trunk, you know, P for pulmonary trunk. Okay, so this is going to be our pulmonary trunk. Okay, so P for pulmonary trunk. So pulmonary trunk will also be related to the sternal angle of Louis. Then apart from that, L for ligamentum arteriosum. Yes, L for ligamentum arteriosum. Now there's a ligament which you know is more connecting this pulmonary trunk to the arch of aorta, which you call it ligamentum arteriosum. Now this ligamentum arteriosum, I've explained it when you look at the liver anatomy, so you can visit that video to get more insight. But this ligamentum arteriosum will be important in actually you know bypassing blood yes from actually what we call the actual moving blood from the pulmonary you know artery to actually the aorta to the aorta so that actually we don't want the blood to get into the lungs you know actually we don't want blood to get into the lungs yes why because in the fetal life yes the lungs are not fully developed to help in oxygenation and all that so that is one thing so that will be also the ligament materials will also be related to the transverse thoracic plane Apart from that, we have what we call the azygous system of veins. Now, I will talk about azygous system of veins in a later video, in a later section. But one thing that you have to know is that in the, okay, these areas, okay, which you know, I can see the ribs. Now, in between the ribs will be intercostal spaces. Therefore, these areas, the intercostal area will be drained by what we call intercostal, you know, posterior. This posterior area will be drained by what we call posterior intercostal veins. And these posterior intercostal veins will actually eventually drain. So the right ones will drain into what we call, essentially drain into what we call the azygos vein. Then the superior portion of the left one will actually drain into what we call the, I mean, accessory hemiazygos vein. And then the azygos vein, sorry, the hemiazygos vein will, I mean, drain the lower portion. But eventually, whether it is hemiazygos or accessory hemiazygos from the I mean the left part, okay, bring the posterior, left posterior aspect of the, you know, the body, intercostal area. Then what will happen is that they eventually drain into what we call azygos vein, for azygos vein to also drain into what we call the superior vena cava. So we'll actually explain the azygos system of veins in our later section. So we've seen azygos vein, plant, P, pulmonary trunk, L, ligamentum arteriosum, A for azygos vein, and for nerves. Now, so there are some nerves which are also going to be related. Essentially, we're going to have some loops of, you know, the recurrent, you know, laryngeal artery. Now, remember that the recurrent laryngeal artery, we are going to have two. Now, the left recurrent laryngeal artery will actually run, okay? Run, you know, beneath what we call the, I mean, the uh, arch of aorta. So in situations where if there's a problem with the arch of aorta, then what will happen is that, yes, there could be some kind of hoarseness. Yes, there could be that kind of problem with speech. Because of this, you know, left recurrent laryngeal artery, at the end, they're going into what we call the tracheoesophageal groove. Okay, tracheoesophageal, this is the trachea. This is the oesophagus. So it will run in the groove between these two to actually supply, you know, some areas of the larynx. So it's also going to be important, okay, in that regard. Now, for the right, you know, I mean, right recurrent laryngeal, you know, nerve, it will actually run beneath what we call, curve around what we call the, I mean, left common, sorry, right common carotid, you know, uh, sorry, right subclavian artery, right subclavian artery. So that's one thing that we are going to find with what we call the nerves. So that's one thing, recurrent laryngeal nerves will be there. Okay, then apart from this, we're also going to have some parasympathetic fibers, which will also be related to what we call, which we call them, you know, the cardiopulmonary, you know, plexus, which are actually coming from what we call the vagus nerve. Then we can also have what we call some sympathetics, also, yes, being, you know, part of the splanking, you know, nerves. You know, splanking has to do with visceral, so also being part of it, which will be related to what we call the transverse thoracic plane. Then finally, will be the thoracic duct. Now, for the thoracic duct, it will actually begin, you know, usually at the level of, so usually this L5, L4, L3, L2. So around L1, L2 levels, vertebral levels, we are going to have the beginning of this, you know, thoracic duct in the abdomen. And it will begin as what we call sustainer cali, 
okay, to begin our sternocali and then eventually ascend into what we call the, I mean, the thorax by piercing through what we call the, I mean, sorry, going through what we call the aortic opening, okay, around T12 vertebral level to actually enter what we call the thorax. Now, it will also be related to what we call, to also in the thorax, it will also be related, some portions will be related to what we call the transverse thoracic plane. So that is one thing that we find with the sternal angle of the and for that matter, the transverse thoracic plane. Now, for orientation, for us to look at the mediastinum, now one thing is that you should know that the opening over here at the superior portion of the thorax, we call a superior thoracic aperture, okay? Or you can also call it the thoracic inlet, right? And then at its inferior portion, okay, around over here, will be the thoracic outlet or the inferior thoracic aperture. Now, one thing that we find, which of course we've done videos on it, the diaphragm will actually separate, okay, find attachment over here and separate the thoracic cavity from the abdominal cavity, okay? So the diaphragm will also be very important, you know, in doing this. Now, I said that with the help of this transverse thoracic plane, we're able to divide the mediastinum into a superior mediastinum and of course inferior mediastinum. So that is one thing that we are going to see. So let's actually look at what we call the, I mean, the superior mediastinum. Let's look at the borders of the superior mediastinum. So with the borders of the superior mediastinum, then it means that superiorly, it will be related to what we call the thoracic inlet or the superior thoracic aperture. Then of course, inferiorly, Okay, because inferior there's no sharp boundary, yes, it will be continuous with what we call the inferior mediastinum, okay, inferior mediastinal area. But we can say that, yes, it will be related to the imaginary line, okay, that was drawn from the rib 2 to the T45 vertebral levels or the transverse thoracic plane. So inferior to be related to it, but of course, it will be continuous with that one. Then, of course, you know, anteriorly, anteriorly, this is the manipulum of the stenum, it will be related to the manipulum of the stenum. Then of course, you know, at you know its you know posterior aspect, it will be related to actually some ribs, which we call them, you know, from you know, actually from T1, you know, T1 rib, T1 all the way. So this is T1 rib, okay, all the way to what we call sorry, I mean it's gonna be here, so from T1 all the way to T4, one, two, three, four. T1 to T4 ribs, okay, to get the bodies as well as, you know, of course. So the bodies is actually what we are talking about because the bodies are rent anterior and that's where they are going to be faced. So bodies of T1 to T4 vertebral, I mean, levels together with their intervertebral disc. So that's one thing that we're going to find. Then on the lateral aspect, now one thing that we find, one thing that we find is that laterally, Okay, on the lateral aspect, now we know that there, are, there will be lungs, two lungs here. So therefore, laterally on either side, we are going to find what we call the plura, the plura. Okay, the plural, you know, membranes will also be related to it. So plura of the lungs will be related to it. Now, so having seen this, then what will be the content of this, you know, superior mediastinum? So with the content, we are going to see, we've seen already seen that one. We've seen what we call the arch of aorta. But of course, some maybe perhaps some little portion of the ascending aorta may also be there. But of course, mainly is the arch of aorta, which is going to give us, you know, those, you know, branches, actually. Then, of course, you know, apart from that, we're also going to find this being, of course, the superior vena cava. And of course, you know, the superior vena cava will be formed from, you know, the left and, of course, right brachiocephalic, you know, veins. Left and right brachiocephalic veins. So that we have the superior vena cava also being a content. So it means that the brachiocephalic veins, yes, will also be content of this, you know, I mean, superior mediastinum, together with, you know, these jugular veins will also be content of this superior mediastinum. So that is one thing that we are going to find. So mainly, that is one thing, yes. Um, one thing, again, is that, you know, there could be some... Okay, so mainly that is one thing that we're going to find. So the arch of aorta together with its branches, the brachiocephalic trunk, sorry, I mean the brachiocephalic vein, okay, superior, superior vena cava, so the brachiocephalic vein together with its, you know, I mean tributaries, you know, actually also be content of what we call the, 
superior you know media styling so that is one thing that we're going to find but again yes i mean we also have what we call the left superior you know intercostal vein will also be there so when i actually look at the ezigo system of veins i will explain all those things in there yes i mean apart from this we're also going to have what you call the vagus nerve also being there but we can't actually appreciate it here the vagus nerve will also be there okay when you look at the anatomy of the vagus nerve i actually explain that one then of course you know the left and right you know vagus nerve we are actually going to have the left and right portions then of course you know the phrenic nerve which will actually run anteriorly okay they will run actually from the neck and then they will cause running you know on what we call the pericardium yes pericardium so that is one thing that we're going to find with the superior media style so phrenic nerve will be there vagus nerves left and right vagus nerves will be there yes apart from that brachiocephalic you know veins together with the tributaries yes of course you know the arch of aorta together with its major branches yes we've seen the bsc you know nerves so bfc you know blood vessels okay which we've seen so that is one thing that we find now so having seen this okay one other thing too that we find which of course in adult human beings you don't find is that you are going to find what you call the thymus the superior portion of the thymus will actually be there but in adults what will happen is that the thymus regresses and becomes fibrous tissue so mainly we don't usually talk about it but of course you know in you know fetal life and of course very beautiful stage uh, sorry very young stage you know of development you are going to find what you call the thymus being present some portion superior portion of the thymus will be in the superior mediastinum too all right now so one other thing too that we find the superior mediastinum will be the trachea of course the trachea will be in the superior mediastinum of course the oesophagus which lies posterior to the trachea will also be a content of the superior mediastinum but apart from this there are some muscles which because they find attachment to the inner portion of the manipulum of the sternum we also say that they are superior they are inferior portion or the caudal portions of these muscles will also be there so mainly we are going to have you know the thyro uh, stenothyroid muscle will be there then we're also going to have steno you know hyoid muscle okay they are caudal portions most inferior portions will also be a content of the superior mediastinum so that is one thing that we find now so let's move on to the inferior mediastinum now we said that for inferior mediastinum it will be found below the transverse thoracic plane all the way to the level where we have the diaphragm okay so one thing is that for the borders we are going to divide the inferior mediastinum into actually three parts right into three parts but of course mainly for the inferior mediastinum then it's related to the remaining bodies and vertebrae of you know the i mean the thoracic vertebrae that area posteriorly then anteriorly to what we call the body in our aspect of the body of the stain then of course to the superior portion of the diaphragm then superiorly will be by the transverse thoracic plane by two of course be continuous with it so let's take it that now one we are going to find that the inferior media stand will be divided into three so with the help of the heart being in the in the middle then anterior to the heart we are going to find the anterior media stand where the heart is we are going to have the middle media stand then behind the heart we are going to have what we call the posterior mediastinum so let's look at the boundaries of what we call anterior mediastinum so the boundaries for the lateral aspects okay laterally for the anterior mediastinum then it will be related to the pleura again because of course you know laterally we are still going to have the lungs still being present so the pleura will be related to the anterior mediastinum laterally then apart from that we are also going to have you know for the anterior relations then it's going to be the inner portion of the body of the stem will be there then apart from that for the posterior relations now because the heart is going to lie you know in between here what will happen is that the heart will be surrounded by the pericardium so at the posterior aspect it will be related to the pericardium okay the anterior mediastinum will be related to the pericardium then of course the superior portion which actually forms the roof will be related to the transverse you know thoracic plane which will be continuous to the superior mediastinum which we've seen then inferiorly will be the diaphragm actually the superior portion of the diaphragm 
So that is one thing that we're going to find with the anterior media stain. Anterior media stain, there's nothing, nothing really much to talk about. But of course, you know, you said that thymus could be there, it will extend inferiorly from the superior media stain to enter there. So the thymus could be there. Then apart from the thymus, yes, I mean, you may have generally, I mean, connective tissue, loose connective tissue actually will be there with steno pericardial, you know, ligaments, you know, some adipose tissue will be there. Then apart from this, there will be what we call the internal mammary artery. Now the internal mammary artery will actually be the, I mean the, I mean coming from what you call the, um, you know the, I mean the, what we call the subclavian artery, which we will look at it. But of course the internal mammary artery will actually also be there, you know, anteriorly. Okay. Now there will be some kind of, you know, the internal mammary artery will actually give some supply to the anterior intercostal area. You know, of course, you know, the posterior intercostal arteries will also be arising directly from the, I mean, descending thoracic aorta. So mainly that's one thing that we're going to find also what we call the, I mean, the internal mammary artery or the internal thoracic artery will also be related there. Then, you know, mainly that is one thing that we're going to find. Okay, so that is it. Now, the next one is for us to talk about the middle media stain. Now, for the middle media stain, think of the heart. Okay, think of the heart with the blood vessels together with the pericardium. So that's the middle mediastinum of the inferior mediastinum. So the middle mediastinum is actually the largest subdivision of the inferior mediastinum. So the middle mediastinum, yes, anteriorly will be related to what we call the pericardium. Yes, its own pericardium related to it anteriorly. Then, apart from this, you know, with the posterior relations, it will be related to what we call the pericardium again. Okay, because pericardium was surrounded both anteriorly and posteriorly. So pericardium surrounding it anteriorly and then posteriorly. Therefore, both anterior and posterior relations should be related to the pericardium. Then of course, laterally, again, you shouldn't forget that laterally, it will always be what we call the pericardium. The pericardium will lead to it laterally. So that is one thing. Then, you know, apart from, you know, that, we're also going to have what we call the, I mean, the... Uh, I mean, superiorly will be related to the transverse thoracic plane. Now, anytime I talk about superior, I think of you know roof. Okay, so another word which can use for superior would be roof. And of course, if I say inferior, I think of floor. So if they ask you of roof or floor, you should be able to tell us these things. Now, of course, again for the inferior portion will be the superior portion of what we call the diaphragm. Diaphragm. So these will be the boundaries of the middle mediastinum. Now I'll look at the heart, you know, in greater detail in our later sections. So for now, just know that the heart will dwell in the middle mediastinum of the inferior mediastinum. Now other contents apart from the heart will be the pericardium itself, which we've seen. Then of course we we'll, we we'll also look at what we call the tracheal bifurcation. Okay, you know the tracheal bifurcation. Somewhat you may find some being around. Okay, the tracheal bifurcation you may find it also being a content of what we call the, you know, the middle media stain, but not mainly, you know, a content, but in a way, you may also find it being there. Then, of course, the main bronchi, which are going to be the left and right main bronchi, yes, will also be there, but they are not really main content, but of course, we can add them to that being part of what we call the middle media stain. Apart from that, yes, of course, we also talk about, you know, the, actually, the ascending aorta, okay, ascending aorta. So because the aorta will going to ascend from the cardiac orifice, the opening of, you know, where, you know, the aortic orifice will actually open and then it will give off, you know, have the ascending aorta. So the ascending aorta will also be a content of, you know, the uh, middle media stream. Now remember that in the ascending aorta, we are going to have two branches which are going to actually supply the heart itself being the coronary artery, the left and right coronary arteries. So they will also be in the middle media stream. Okay, so middle media stain, we are going to have these contents, you know, as well. Yes, apart from this, you're going to have what we call the pulmonary trunk, because of course the pulmonary trunk is also related to the heart, okay, together with it, you know, of course, right and left, you know, pulmonary, you know, arteries will also be there, okay, will be in there. Then, apart from this, you're also going to have what we call the tracheal, you know, brachial lymph nodes will also be there, as well as, of course, superior vena cava, so superior vena cava, who also be in the middle media stain. Of course, some portion, I mean, the terminal portion of inferior vena cava will also be in the mid, I mean, media stain. 
Now, anytime we talk about these blood vessels, remember that, for instance, the inferior vena cava will be draining from the lower areas of the body to superior. Therefore, the terminal portions of the, I mean, inferior vena cava will be related to it. Then, of course, I mean, the most proximal portion, or let's say, yes, I mean, the most distal portion, actually, of what we call the superior vena cava will also be related to the middle mediastinum. So the great vessels which are related to the heart, the pericardium itself, then of course the heart itself, you know, will be related to them together with the major, you know, branches, plasma branches that we're going to find, will be related to what we call the, you know, middle mediastinum. Then, apart from this, we are also going to have what we call the posterior mediastinum. So having seen the heart being the middle, then behind the heart and the pericardium, we will have what we call the posterior mediastinum. So the for posterior mediastinum, the borders will be anteriorly, because related going to be related to the heart, the pericardium again, the posterior aspects, yes, pericardium related to it. Then apart from this, yes, anteriorly, it will be related to some vertebrae of the thorax, actually from T5 to T12 vertebral levels, T5, T4, vertebral, or posteriorly, the bodies of T5, T12, together with the adjoining intervertebral, you know, disc. Then, of course, laterally, again, you won't forget our mediastinum. So the mediastinum will be there. Actually, the plural, I mean, the mediastinal plural, okay, will be there. Mediastinum related to it, actually. Then, of course, you know, superiorly, again, the imaginary line that we have, so the transverse thoracic plane, but it will actually be continuous with the superior mediastinum. Then, of course, the floor or the inferior portion will be the superior surface of the diaphragm. So these ones will be the boundaries of the posterior mediastinum. So you just need to think of the structures which are there to help you just remember the boundaries of the mediastinum. Now, for the posterior mediastinum, very simple for us with the mnemonic dates, D A T E S can actually help us remember the contents of the posterior mediastinum and p is actually going to be what we call the so dates and d is going to be what we call the descending aorta so descending thoracic aorta the aorta will descend okay so at the posterior mediastinum we are going to find what we call the descending thoracic aorta okay will be there now the descending thoracic aorta as it runs what happens is that it gives off some i mean posterior intercostal you know arches to supply you know those areas so that is one thing now but one thing is that during its course what will happen is that yes it descends to the left of you know the what we call the vertebrae so you can see that you know there's the right side there's the left so you can see it courses a bit to the left you know it moves this way as arch of aorta to the left a bit running actually posterior to what we call the left main bronchus, the left main bronchus, okay, which you can find here. So running actually posterior to it. Then yes, it will actually enter the actually the the thorax. It will I mean pierce through the diaphragm at the level of T12 vertebral level. Yes, to also give to become what we call the abdominal aorta. Therefore, at the posterior mediastinum, we are also going to have what we call the I mean the uh, the descending thoracic aorta. Not only do we have the descent thoracic aorta, but we also have what we call the oesophagus. So the oesophagus will also be there. Okay, the oesophagus will also be there in what we call the posterior mediastinum. Of course, the oesophagus will look at that one already, but of course, it also pierces it at the level of you know T10 vertebral level, you know, together with that one. And the oesophageal hiatus, you know, will pierce it. So that is the I mean the oesophagus. Then, apart from that, yes, so actually, yes, the mnemonic is dates. Now, D is for descending aorta, A is for azigos system of veins, which I said I'm going to talk about it. Now, remember that the azigos system of veins, azigos, now remember that we talked about the aortic opening using the mnemonic AAT to be the content of this aortic opening, apart from the aorta itself. We are going to have the azigos system of veins, and of course, thoracic duct. So again, thoracic duct will also be a content. Sorry, will also be a content of the posterior mediastinum, thoracic duct, which of course we said that to begin the abdomen at you know L1, L2 vertebral or cystina cali, and then it will run through what we call the aortic opening to enter the posterior mediastinum. So I mean the, I mean the, um, what we call the posterior uh, 
sorry, the Triassic that will also be a content of the posterior medias time. But again, it will also be a content of the superior medias time. Remember again that in the superior medias time, we saw the oesophagus also being a content of the superior medias time. Then, you know, the mnemonic is D-A-T-E-S, dates, descending, you know, aorta, is goes vein, is goes system of veins, actually, yes, T for thoracic duct, E for oesophagus. Now, remember, our oesophagus, we start with O, but some people will use E, you know, the Americans, but, of course, E for oesophagus, that we've seen, then, of course, there will be, I mean, sympathetic, you know, fibers, actually, sympathetic chain will also be related to the posterior medias time. Right, so I mean, there's it. We've actually looked at what we call the mediastine being the midway between what we call the pleural cavities, the left and right pleural cavities, and we've seen the major content. Now, just bear in mind that we are supposed to know the point. I mean, the, I mean, the boundaries of these areas we call the mediastine. You should also know the content of the mediastine, and of course, some clinical relations. So, thank you very much for your audience, and may God richly bless you.